please welcome the CEO of Ford, Mark Fields. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome. Uh, it's really an honor to be uh, back at the LA show and uh, at this uh, new automobility LA, first time ever. And I, I think we should all take a second to recognize the significance of this moment because we're attending the first major auto show in the world that's not just about cars. And I think that is a pretty amazing sign of something that's happening all around us. Uh, it's occurring in the streets outside of the conference hall. It's also occurring on the roads and cities on every continent and in our day-to-day -day lives. Because we really are on the cusp of a mobility revolution. And at Ford, we are very excited about that. Because we've literally spent the last 100 years getting ready for this moment. So let me show you. So at Ford, we always used world fairs as an opportunity to talk about how we envision the future. And at the 1939 World's Fair, we talked about how soybeans and also cane sugar could be used to make components of our vehicles. And those were innovations in sustainability that we put into mass production in the early half of the 20th century. Now, we also had an exhibit there that we called the Road of Tomorrow and it featured a service station and actually presented the idea that infrastructure upgrades would soon allow drivers to be able to travel the entire country with ease. And both of these things, of course, we take for granted now. But back in the day, they were new and they were very provocative ideas. And then move forward to the 1964 World's Fair. Well, we created a seven-acre journey into the fabulous future. And as you saw from the video there, visitors could drive to a space city. And there were laser beams, and there were radio telescopes. And I was actually at the World's Fair, and I still have fond, albeit faint, memories of that, uh, of that time. And this exhibit essentially was designed to give a glimpse of what the future of transportation could look like. And from, it, from the beginning, Ford has always been a company that used innovation to create a better tomorrow. So let me give you an example. 120 years ago, this was at the cutting edge of personal mobility. And at that time, people only traveled about four miles a day. So naturally, they structured their lives around that limitation. But that meant people couldn't get to where they really wanted to go. And in fact, they couldn't even imagine going places beyond that four-mile stretch. So that's the problem that our founder, Henry Ford, set out to solve. He imagined a future where everybody could afford a vehicle that would radically expand their horizons. And he was dedicated to making people's lives better by changing the way the world moves. And that's part of our DNA, and that's what's still driving us each and every day. Now, before mass production of affordable automobiles, most people never ventured more than 10 miles from their home in their lifetimes. So imagine never leaving a 10-mile radius around your house. So when you think about it that way, you can really appreciate the significance of that first major change of personal mobility. But what's interesting is that at that time, people spend moving from point A to point B 
has remained remarkably constant over time. People all over the world are moving, on average, about an hour to an hour and a half every day. And that's been true for several hundred years. And what's changed is the distances that people are traveling. Our range, and of course the explosion of, op of options and also the opportunity that come with it, have been expanded, obviously, by new vehicles and the infrastructure that we built all around them. And with that expansion has come the evolution of the travel experience. Take a look at this evolution at Ford. Now, through the years, dedicated teams and innovation have transformed the very first Ford into this. And cars such as these are still very, very important. In fact, just last night, we introduced the, uh, Ford's newest SUV, the Ford EcoSport. But while we continue to make great vehicles, they are no longer our entire game. Today, we're not only dreaming about the road of tomorrow, we're also focused on creating the city of tomorrow, which means continuing to find ways to make people's lives better whether they own a car or not. So consider this. Right here in Los Angeles, commuters can easily spend more than an hour each way getting to work. So that's two hours out of the day when you're trapped in traffic. Now, over a lifetime, that's nearly 25% of your free time, the hours that you're not working or you're not sleeping. And of course, congestion is costly in other ways as well. LA congestion accounts for one-fifth of the congestion in the US and costs the city nearly $23 billion a year. And if you zoom out from that, you can see that every year in the United States, drivers spend roughly 160 million hours in their vehicles. And guess what? It's going to get worse. Some estimates say that the population growth and the expansion of today's transportation options will increase total miles driven by as much as 25% by the year 2040. So these are really serious challenges. But at Ford, we believe in the power of human imagination. We believe in our collective ability to solve these big mobility problems. And the key is to focus on the things that are most important. Because it's not about building fancy machine or writing lines of amazing code. It's about helping each other. Because mobility is really not just about technology. It's about people. And at Ford, we feel really strongly about this. Our greatest asset, of course, is the people who make up our company. It's our ability to work together in new and exciting ways, both inside and outside the company. And this is at the heart of everything that we do. Now, there's a lot of talk these days about artificial intelligence. And at Ford, our intelligence isn't artificial. It's human. And it's always been that way at Ford. So with that in mind, Ford has decided to take an expansive view of mobility. So let me give you a couple of examples of what we're thinking about. Now, imagine if we focused on optimizing roads for the total number of people on them instead of the total number of vehicles. You know, how would that affect the transportation solutions that we develop? Or what if we could transform a commute from something that's painful into an opportunity to take a class, to watch a movie, to play a game? Or think about this. What would a city look like if more people were using shared services versus personally owned vehicles? At Ford, we've seen how exciting and also how liberating it is to imagine the future mobility in this way. And from our vantage point, cities carry the biggest rewards and risks as we create that city of tomorrow. And that's why we created Ford City Solutions Team. 
and their job is to work with cities around the world to help map the future, starting with San Francisco and growing from there. Now we know every city is unique with different needs and unique transportation needs and challenges. But instead of offering a single set of solutions to all cities, we're working with each city directly to identify the needs of their citizens and then tailor transportation solutions for them. It's also why the innovative team at Chariot is now part of our Ford Mobility team. Now Chariot is the app-based crowdsourced shuttle service that adapts to customer needs. It started in San Francisco and now has launched in Austin, Texas, with plans to work at least and add four more cities in the next 15 months. And it's also why we're partnering with Motivate and the Bay Area Bike Share to launch Ford Go Bikes, providing yet another opportunity for people to move easily around their city. And we're also partnering with some amazing thinkers to bring fully autonomous vehicles to life with no steering wheel, no gas pedal, no brake pedal, starting in 2021 for use in ride sharing and ride hailing services. Now importantly, leading in these mobility solutions and working together with cities is good for our business. You know, Ford has been a longtime partner to cities as the leading provider of vehicles for police, for rescue, and taxis in cities around the world. Now that will continue and even grow as we become even closer to key cities, which will improve our core business of building and designing great vehicles. But at the same time, we'll see substantial revenue opportunity in providing mobility solutions to millions of commuters in the US and the growing workforce in several major cities globally, many of whom do not own vehicles today or do business with Ford. Now, all of this work will help us really unlock the future of transportation systems. And beginning next year, we'll be directly engaging with city leaders, tech visionaries, urban planners, designers, and local communities, bringing the public and the private together to discuss and develop solutions for transportation system that can improve people's lives in ways that we can only just begin to imagine. And today, I'm also proud to announce that Ford is going to begin to collaborate with Mike Bloomberg in his philanthropic work with a coalition of mayors worldwide. And we're discussing how we can work together to help create that city of tomorrow, really incubating ideas around mobility to accelerate solutions in these cities. And working with Bloomberg, we'll collect the best ideas from around the world and then put them into action. So at Ford, we clearly understand that achieving this success cannot be done on our own. It will require working together and partnering and just as importantly, listening to each other. And that's why today we've invited some of the country's best mobility thinkers and leaders to continue this conversation about how we together can create that city of tomorrow. 